All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of the Flat Hat Podcast for this new semester. My name is Ryan Goodman, and I am the, for those of you who don't know me, I am the new digital media editor for the Flat Hat. So I am in charge. I oversee a couple of different sections. They are photos, videos, social media, graphics, and podcasts. So I'm going to be the host for, I guess, the foreseeable future, unless Adam really, really wants his job back and he stages some sort of coup. <laughs> but if not, then I guess you're you're stuck with me for a little while. But we have a couple other people with us here today. We have our, our outgoing exec team. So they were all our, uh, this is our exec team from the last year. So if you guys just want to go around and introduce yourselves to so just like name, what was your, your role on staff? where you're from, anything else you think you think the people should know about you. Okay, I'll start. Um, my name is Vivian. I was the executive editor um, last year, so I oversaw Variety and Opinions. Um, I'm a senior. I'm from Northern Virginia, as most of us are, um, and I'm a history major and self-design journalism and digital media major. My name is Molly Parks. Um, I'm the outgoing editor-in-chief. I, as Vivian loves to point out, I love to say that I'm from Philadelphia. <laughs> I live in South Jersey, though. Um, Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> and I am a senior history and English major. Yeah. Well, thank you for that lead-in, Molly. <laughs> uh, my name is Jake Forbes. I am a senior from the greater Boston area studying government and public policy. And I am the outgoing managing editor, meaning I oversee or oversaw news, sports, and data. <laughs> nice. Hi. Uh, I am Adam. I am the outgoing digital media editor. I'm kind of like Ryan, if Ryan knew a lot less about digital media <laughs> than he does. Um, yeah, I gave it the old college try. Uh, you did yeah, great. You did awesome. Oh, thank you. I, uh, I was fishing for that. But no, uh, I am studying uh, math and economics. Cincinnati, Ohio. And now I will throw it over to Anna. Hi, I'm Anna. Um, I'm the outgoing operations coordinator, so I oversaw like copy, but mainly my um, big thing was I ran the intern program. I am from DC, actual DC. <laughs> and I'm a history and government double major. She's also the incoming editor in chief. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm so yeah, so I guess <laughs> that is something to note that some of you guys are, you know, seniors, so this is your last semester here, and that means that last semester was your last one on staff. Some of us are juniors, so some of us are, you know, we, we have a little bit of time left to, to do some stuff. So I guess to, to kind of start off with the first question, I guess we already hit on this a little bit with our introductions, but, like, what was kind of your day-to-day, your -day, like, schedule last year? Like, you know... What what'd you do? What what did your role actually entail you doing beyond just, you know, I oversee X, Y, and Z? Whoever wants to. I can take this one <laughs> to start. Um, I, Flat Hat was kind of my life <laughs> in the past year. Um, I, like, definitely did work for the paper every day. And um, whether that was answering emails, dealing with, complaint crises or um, helping people write articles or writing articles myself. I definitely, like, yeah, Flat Hat was added so much to my life, but also added a lot of time to my life, yeah. too. There's so many emails. Um, That's what I've realized. Yeah. Like, in just the yeah. first couple of weeks I've been doing the digital media editor thing, is, like, there's so many responding to text messages and emails and right. coordinating people. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. It also, though, like, you meet so many cool people through that and whether that's through <laughs> emails over screen or whether it's like through in-person interviews or whether it's just like the relationships you form on staff um I think that was like the most rewarding time consuming part of my job was getting to meet and interact with so many awesome people so I think for me I was gonna build off of the social point um I feel like a lot of my job was just kind of keeping my editors 
um, like on track for what they were doing. So like, um, as I said, I oversaw um, variety of miles. <laughs> what are you trying to say about them? No, like nothing bad. It's just like just a lot of check ins of like making sure that we have enough articles for the week. Um, the status on the articles, like if there are any writers who need like extensions and what what we're gonna do to cover for the people who are not gonna get their stories on time. Like making sure we have enough graphics for opinions articles, and also a lot for opinions was like like vetting ideas before they were written because that's kind of the biggest thing with opinions is like making sure the ideas are um sort of relevant and timely um rather than like sort of after the fact being like okay now we can't even do anything with this article because it's already written so we try to make sure the ideas are solid to begin with um and then of course like tons of editing (laughs) a lot of editing um especially before like our production nights um and just like a lot of feedback between like me and the writers just asking them to fix things or going back and asking for clarity and stuff like that. So a lot of communication, a lot of editing, which I'm sure Jake can sort of build off of. Yeah. Did you mention editing yet? (laughs) Um, I mean, I, I love editing. Um, I think it's really special getting to go in and help someone really improve their writing and sort of say exactly what they want to say. Um, I think also what you mentioned was a lot of communication, sort of having that supervisor role um, we have a very talented flat hat team. And so you don't need to be hovering over every single thing that your editors are doing. You're more there as a supervisor to make, sh- make sure that they feel comfortable. They have the resources that they need. And maybe that's stepping in and doing some event coverage as a member of exec, which is honestly really fun because you don't get to do that, um, too much when you're doing so much editing. Yes. Um, but it also gives you access to do things that you didn't think you would do priority to cover articles you didn't think you'd cover. Um, I remember covering the governor's mental health forum, which was a closed door event. No one on campus knew it was happening except those that were invited. It was a great chance to speak with people that I never thought I would speak to. Um, But like I said, I mean, my editors were so competent and they knew what they were doing. But at the same time, flat hat is it burns you out. And so it was really important to have those frequent check ins that Vivian mentioned to make sure that they have those resources that they need. Nice. Yeah. So for me, <clears throat> in the digital media role, one thing, as Ryan kind of mentioned, I did the the podcast last year, and so that was a really cool experience. I didn't have any prior experience with podcasting; just kind of stepped into it and Same. had some got some cool guests on throughout the year. So that was exciting. And then, in terms of some of the broader digital media roles, uh, one big thing we did was every Sunday night we'd have uh, a dinner with some of the different editors and associate editors. And although there were like 16 people in the group chat. The average dinner had like four people there, to be completely honest. Hey, but we, don't was, to, we don't need to be throwing a shade just yet. That's, no, for, that's no. for the last question. I'm not calling anyone out. That's not calling anyone out. It was, uh, that was always a fun time. And then uh, doing a newsletter after most print nights, uh, just kind of highlighting some of the best articles from the print. And I'd reach out to Vivian and Jake and have them text me the uh, articles they thought were um, some of the most important ones from that past cycle. Jake would normally text me too many, and I'd be like, oh, "Send me that many sports articles, man. I'm only bring for two in the newsletter." Uh, but then I just gave up and just started deciding which ones I didn't want to put out there. Um, and yeah, and then just like a lot of people have touched on, a lot of communicating and coordinating between various editors and associates on the project. Adam, I love showcasing our mediocre sports teams. Whoa. Don't say that. <laughs> when sports Dale. editor speaks out. <laughs> I just say that. It's a sound bite right there. When, I will um, also just quickly plug Adam because I remember like when I first became EIC and was like really looking at who would be on exec, I knew I wanted Adam to like, well, first and foremost, not only like be a leader in flat hat because I think he deserves that role and that power. Um, but also, I like, deserve power. <laughs> <laughs> There's <laughs> one takeaway from today's episode: is Adam, that Adam deserves, deserves power. power. <laughs> yeah, but also, just I knew how funny of a person you were, and I wanted to show that side of you too, like through a more audio visual. Realm, which um, is why podcasts, he gets to so. be in charge of our upcoming advice column. So I'm here <laughs> to plug to plug a little bit of future content. I don't know when that's going up, but people should check out whatever it eventually happens. Our yeah. upcoming advice column, and if you have a need for advice for very serious, very hard hitting advice, Adam is here to to really help you out and really get your life back on track. 
Yeah. So we're, we're looking forward to that. But seriously, you like grabbed this podcast by the horns. You really like took it in such a good direction. And I think we're all very impressed. By that. So. And one thing to kind of build on what Jake was saying, with like the burnout, I think that's one thing that the dinner was kind of great for. It's just helping to help because the digital media section can be kind of isolated. Like you don't have to show up to basically anything other than the Tuesday meetings. So it was good to yeah. kind of get to know people on on video and to get to know you better. And I think that really did help a lot with burnout is, you know, having friends on staff. That that made the the whole experience, I think, a little bit better at those moments where you kind of feel like you're drowning with just how much stuff is getting piled on. Yeah, that was, that was definitely the goal. I don't know why this turned into like, let's build up Adam's ego. <laughs> <laughs> but thank just, you very much. Yeah. Going around. It was a lot of fun. All right, shut up, Adam. Time. We're done now. <laughs> Well, I guess for me, it was a little bit different because I didn't do any sort of editing as operations coordinator, but like the communication, like times 100 is I feel like what I did. Yeah. Um, so I mainly ran the intern program, which is basically our way of getting new writers involved in the flat hat. So, um, and this was just in the fall semester. We had like, like close to like 100 um, people interested in joining sign up. And then um, I hosted like weekly, bi-weekly lessons and then bi-weekly social events for them. Um, sort of just teaching them about journalism and about the flat hat, getting them paired with different sections and like engaged with different types of work they can do. Um, and so, yeah, that was just my entire semester was working with like dozens of little babies and teaching them and training them to become the future of the flat hat. Which I think you did a really fantastic job on. Even just Thank over you. the past couple of days, like I've been doing the staff photos, a mm -hmm. lot of new faces, yep. a yeah. lot of like freshmen, people I do not recognize that you're like, you're flat hat, right? Like you are here for <laughs> photos. And it's really exciting to see like all of these these new people coming into these roles. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I guess it's like not really too much of a a question per se, but there are there any sort of like experiences or moments from kind of the past year that stuck out to you for whatever reason, just stuff you'd like to to ruminate on? Um, I can start like uh I think reflecting back on, like, uh, the last year, like, being on Anxiety, like, my sort of, like, I guess proudest moment or, like, my most, like, fondest memory is just being able to, like, build my team. Like, I became very, very close to my sections. Like, everyone knows I call them my kiddos, like, all the time. And, like, genuinely, we we're all, like, very close, like, inside and outside of the newsroom. And it's very rewarding to me that all four of them decided to stay on staff and came back the next year and are still equally as excited and like energized about their roles. Like even after like a very tiring year, like being section editor is a lot of work, but all of them wanted to come back and do it. Um, and they're still like doing a great job and they're still close to one another. And just like knowing that I was able to facilitate those types of relationships and like sort of foster that next generation of flatheaders and student journalists, like that means so much to me. And it's like one of like the proudest things I feel like I did like at my time at William Mary. So yeah, shout out to all of them that I love very much. Yeah. I think you like <laughs> literally did such an amazing job with that and seeing, I don't know, seeing the four of their faces when you would come into production night was always so, so cool for, for the rest of us. Um, but yeah, I think definitely this is the staff that I've felt most closest to. Um, in terms of, like, a social aspect as well, I think, like, I don't know, just reminiscing on, like, the friendships I've built with, like, the people at this table and then, like, all of the section editors, too, is just definitely the most rewarding aspect of the job. Um, but, like, specifically for Anna, <laughs> like, when you look at the year ahead, I think there's going to be a lot of ups and downs and, like, I don't know how to say this without sounding incredibly cheesy, but like the way you weather those downs and weather those storms is teaches you a lot about why the job is so important and honestly like helps you grow as a person so much. So try and think about like the challenges that come your way as more like of teaching moments. Yeah. And lean into your staff around you. <laughs> there have been Many times when Jake Forbes has, has saved me and, yeah, Sarah Devendorf, 
huge I don't know how she so. does it. The <laughs> amount of complaints that she must have dealt with last year, like, <laughs> just insane. Um, yeah. Oh, you want to go ahead, Alex? No, I was just going to say, do you ever think about the fact that the phrase weather the storm, that, like, Where storm is this? a type of weather? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if there's something there. You do some investigating. Something yeah, to chew on. Um, I want to echo the sentiment that Vivian was speaking on. I think this, I would like a stat on how young this staff was compared to previous staffs, like how you compare the roster ages of professional sports teams. Um, I mean, all four of Vivian's editors were new. Um, five of my six, no, wait, how many did I have? Four of my five editors, print editors were brand new. Um, and that makes it really difficult because it's not just the writing and the editing, but it's the InDesign and there's just so many moving parts. Um, so I think the, the paper is set up for a great future, but what I noticed throughout the year was the learning curve um, and how much they improved. I mean, it's tough when you're coming in and half of our staff hadn't done high school journalism. Half of them were editors in chief or exec members in high school, um, as were some of us at this table. And some people are a serious advantage over others in, in that regards, but at the end of the day, everyone comes out the same because they've all put in so much dedication over the year, and it's the applied, unique experience of Flat Hat, which I think is so different from any other paper, at least that I've been on. Um, so I really give credit to my kids for really growing, um, and I think the relationships that you form with people that you just wouldn't otherwise become close with, um, I think part of that is... We have this one shared interest and we might have tons of other different interests, but like coming from a sports background, you know, I already knew my sports editors from outside of Flat Hat, but I didn't know my news editors. And now I am very close with them. I have events like Flat Hat formal to thank for that. <laughs> um, and it, it's just some of the most memorable times, I think, have been those sort of rogue social events where we can all just let off steam because there's so much emotion that goes into Flat Hat. Um, not just because we're spending so much time doing it, but it's important work. Um, and so tensions can run high, as we all know. Um, so when we get to blow off steam together and just hang out in a stress-free environment, it's really just something special. Do you guys ever look back on, like, some of the first articles you wrote and compare them to, to some of the later stuff? Because I know, like, I hate looking at the first photos of mine <laughs> that went up on the website because I'm like they're so dark and they're so grainy. And then like I compare them to what I'm doing now and it's like, wow, this paper really, like this is what made me kind of yeah. like get it together, you know? I actually got, sorry, go ahead. No. I just I actually got an email this week from someone that's doing research on OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, which I have. And I wrote an article freshman year about living with OCD and COVID. And he was, he emailed me this week asking uh, if he could interview me for his research project and his that's PhD. So cool. And he, I like went back to the article and I was like, oh my God, I was <laughs> such a terrible writer. <laughs> so yes, like definitely changed a lot. And um, I think part of it is from writing yourself, but editing, I think you, you see so many different types of writing styles and just editing helps you to hone in your own craft. Yeah. yeah. It's so funny you say that because I was going through my <laughs> Google Docs the other day, organizing oh, man. all of my papers and I <laughs> scrolled all the way down to the first news article I wrote for about uh, the RA shortage in my freshman fall and saw the edits that Charles Coleman loved <laughs> that he made. <laughs> I remember having a meeting with him in Swab Romas and him being like, there really weren't that many edits on those articles. It was really, really good. <laughs> Me looking at all, <laughs> all of these comments on the side. <laughs> Dang, how, how much Did you have your three changed. sources, though? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. It was a challenge, though, <laughs> to get RAs to talk. But, yeah. <laughs> New idea, outgoing editors read their first piece. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good video. Be, or a good podcast episode. All right. I should write that down somewhere. Yeah. Anything else, or do we want to end another question? Oh, on, um, <clears throat> so the question was about just things we'll ruminate on. Just, or we'll yeah, ruminate. Was there anything yeah. in particular that stuck out over the past year? Right. I, I think for me the biggest thing was definitely just seeing how getting to come into contact with people who are so talented in areas um, that are just so diverse because, like, digital media obviously encompasses a lot of very different sections. Like You have yeah. graphics and podcasts and photos and videos and social media, which are all uh, really wide set of skills and so just being able to 
week in, week out, look at some just spectacular graphics or watch a video Tygo would send me and just really just be blown away by how um, talented so many of the people on the staff are. And it was always funny. Whenever Tyga sent me a video, he's like, he would always send it in such a humble way and be like, hey, here's my first attempt with the video. Let me know if there's anything you think I should change or, like, if there are issues with it and things like that. And then I'd watch it, and it's just, like, a flawless piece of art, you know. <laughs> Tyga's such a funny guy. Yeah. Some of the, uh, I was at their, their kind of pitch meeting last week. They have some fun ideas up on the uh, on the whiteboard. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything. Yeah, don't spoil anything. <laughs> I'll say the title GGV Mold has me very excited to see what they're, uh, what they're cooking up. As well as a, a an interesting tour of campus, I'll put it that way. So there's some there's always some fun stuff coming out of the uh, the video department. Yeah, but yeah, so it's just really fun to be able to see just how talented and passionate people are at such different things um, that are all very important to the culture as a whole. And I think for me, it's kind of similar to what other people are saying, but a little bit different. Just seeing how many like interns have like stuck with it. Um, like I said, we started with like a hundred, and of course we like. Ended up with much fewer than that, but like that's normal. That's like what everybody like they join for all, like all the clubs, and then like yeah. they can't go to any of them. But like um, I think by the end we had over thirty interns completing two projects, which like maybe doesn't sound like a lot, but when I was an intern, I only completed one. I did one project Here as I an am. intern, and so, they were desperate for photographers, um, so I was like, yeah, I guess they let me on. Yeah, exactly. So like just seeing people stick with it and being really engaged, and like they asked me so many questions, which was like a lot sometimes. But then it's like it's because they cared so much, and I think that's really exciting thinking about the future it, it always feels really nice when when the photographers like they reach out to me with a question it's like oh my god you're actually putting like like i had one photographer reach out and ask about a lens they should use for an event they were covering the next day and i was like this is more pre-thought mm -hmm. that you're putting into this one event that i put into like any photography event that i ever did i would just show up and just hope it all worked out so yeah you, you did a really good job what was what was the thing that inspired you to kind of like get involved with student journalism, whether you started with the flat hat as your first kind of experience with that or whether it was in high school or something else? Oh, I can start. So <laughs> when I came to William & Mary, I was like debating between doing journalism or law. And I decided on law before coming here because I was like, this is ridiculous. Like I'm going to be broke for the rest of my life if I be a journalist. <laughs> um, spoiler alert, I now want to be a journalist. But um, so when I came in freshman year, I took like public policy and gov classes and like it was absolutely the bane of my existence. And I was like, I cannot spend the rest of my life doing this. Um, so then when sophomore year came around and also like that was when the campus started opening up again um, after COVID. Then I was like, okay, I'm going to pivot out of law and go back to journalism. And I didn't have any journalism experience. I took like one journalism class in high school. Um, but I was like, I'm just going to jump into it. And I like really loved doing the intern program. Um, shout out to like Ashanti, who was the executive editor before me, and also Maddie Harris, um, who was um, the variety editor at the time and who later became my co-editor. They really like took me in and showed me the ropes like I was one of those annoying interns that I came to every single production night and I came to staff meetings even though I wasn't like even supposed to be there but they were always like super supportive of me and like um really just made me feel at home there and that was like when I it clicked for me that I was like yeah this is what I want to do and like this is I'm going to stick with this so the flat has really been like my longest standing like commitment that I've stuck with throughout college and I've always been like very grateful for that so that was kind of like my origin story. <laughs> I definitely grew up in a very media conscious household. Like my parents constantly had the TV on and it was always MSNBC and CNN. And like I <laughs> grew up watching the Rachel Maddow show and the Ed show and <laughs> Countdown with Keith Olbermann. <laughs> and oh it it kind of like didn't really have any other, or, or had blinders on to going into news and um, joined my middle school paper and then my high school paper and was editor of my high school paper and then um, came to college and was like, maybe I don't want to do this. <laughs> but then I joined the Flat Hat um, and went through the intern program, uh, then was a news editor. And I would say that year as news editor was like one of the hardest years on staff, I think. Um, just like really getting because you still feel so new at, at, especially if, if you start as a freshman and I think that adjustment is really difficult um I came close to like 
wanting to leave the paper a couple different times, but had so many supportive people around me, like Claire Hogan, Alexander Fryer, and, um, Charles Coleman, Lulu, like all of these people who like really supported me in my toughest moments and made me stick with it. And yeah, then went through managing and EIC and I, I'm so, so grateful for this paper and, like, all the experiences that it's given me and the people it's given me. I remember calling you, <laughs> Vivian, after the Friendsgiving at my apartment and literally just, like, getting... Or maybe I was texting you while I was in tears, but <laughs> just literally being brought to tears about how incredible this staff is and how... How much you guys have like really shaped my life and my experience over the past year and yeah. Yeah, I literally was gonna bring up Friendsgiving earlier when Jake was talking about like blowing off steam and like yeah. having fun social events. Like um historically I feel like Waha hasn't been super great about doing social events. We're, we're like so bad. we're so busy all the time and we're so like like the paper is such a huge commitment outside of school and like I feel like a lot of us are just like if we have free time we're working on the paper. So like but I feel like last year we started trying to do a lot more social events and like Friendsgiving was like one of the best ones that we ended up hosting. Like we all went to Molly's apartment um, and we all like had a bunch of food. Chris Jake brought egg drop soup. Chicken, like, <laughs> and like that was the best uh, fried ever. Chicken. Fried chicken. That's yeah. Right. Um, and it was like such a fun time, like, and just reminds all of us of like why we're doing this and like why we love the paper so much. So Absolutely. Yeah. I think that is my fondest memory like yeah. on staff yeah. is the Friendsgiving. Shout out. Vivian and Ethan. <laughs> that one. <laughs> that was good. I think I attribute my start in journalism to FOMO. Um, in middle school, I was doing like athletic electives, and I saw the newspaper elective. They went to New York to Columbia for the annual Scholastic Press Conference, and I was so jealous. <laughs> so I joined the paper just to go to New York. I'd never been to New York before. Um, and I proudly wear my new night shirt still if anyone from Boston's listening. Um, but I, and for the next six years I went to Columbia and that really transformed, like that really made me realize I want to do this because I was getting to learn from the best professors in journalism from across the country at such a young age. Um, and like Molly, I was the editor of my paper and it burnt me out. Um, because not only are you, with college it's different, but when you were in school from literally 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and then you have your sports and mm -hmm. applying to colleges, I mean, it is, it's a grind. Um, and you're just, you're young, you're not prepared to handle all that stress. Um, so I, I got lunch with my co-editor uh, when I was home for break and she hasn't touched newspaper uh, since then. But I, I think the only reason I joined the flat is because I didn't have a community at all in 2020. I mean, coming to the college, you couldn't do sports, really. You couldn't do anything. But the flat hat, it, I mean, you can still do journalism virtually. And so um, even though my involvement was very minimal at the start, it just slowly ramped up. And I was forced into sports editor because <laughs> there was no one else. Um, Thank God. <laughs> I was low-key bullied into managing editor by Lulu. Um Shout out Lulu. And I won't change it. And I won't change a thing. Um, I, I'm kind of the opposite of Vivian, where like I've always had an interest for journalism and law slash policy. Um, I am pursuing the law policy track against Molly's heart. Corporate um, America. Cor <laughs> selling yes. my heart to corporate he America. Want to be broke. Uh, but I don't want to okay. be broke. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, so I will. I will. I, maybe I will spend my life, you know, in dedication to Vivian's pursuance of journalism. But I will cheer her on and be on the sideline. Financially <laughs> contribute, please. Me. Well, you you as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I appreciate the move from corporate America law to. You've always had that anti sentiment. So. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. So you went to? Did you say you went to Columbia for six years, or what were you saying? It was like an annual trip in March, um, and it was crazy. always almost snowed out. But yeah, we would stay in like a crappy hotel and go take. It was an, a national conference for high school journalism, uh, and it was the coolest. We'd see a Broadway show every year and oh go to Times Square. It was like a surreal experience as a high schooler. 
The Bulldog Bulletin did not have those problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we were. Well, you know, we were just so good at generating ad revenue. <laughs> All right. And, and All making right. parents pay money. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Blaze ads. Hey, well, shout out to Blaze Pizza. <laughs> Yeah, they just not sponsored. It. Not sponsored, yeah. but we but love if you want to give us more money. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone listening to this has a lot of just extra cash lying around. We can put. We can give you a full page advertisement in the back of the newspaper. Yeah. Anything, you want. Anything you want. Well, yeah. mm. okay. well, I guess you're in charge. You can you can make that I make the that claim. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So for me, um, <laughs> I think I've just always loved writing. Um, for a very long time, I've just found it to be a lot of fun and just something I enjoyed doing and so it wasn't until my senior year of high school but I just got involved in a very low commitment capacity on the the paper at my high school and I just started writing articles I think most weeks Um, and at first it was normal stuff like interviewing people but then as the year went on it just slowly devolved into more and more kind of absurd nonsense (laughs) um, (laughs) very meaningless stuff Uh, but it became more and more fun as the year went on in my mind as I grew more comfortable just writing things that didn't weren't important at all. Um, yes, they are. And yeah. so I, no, uh, in a... Revolutionized way, you know? walking yes. across campus. I, 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 I do not walk on the paths in Sunken Garden anymore. I, um, Thank you very much. Yeah, see. I'm, I'm pretty sure my paths. parents mentioned that article to me. <laughs> wow. Like someone wrote about like crossing Sunken Garden weird. And I was like, oh, really? And now I know the celebrity. Whoa. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> yes, nice everyone time. listening should read Adam's articles. Like I will always say, they're my favorite to read because yeah. he has such a unique right writing now. style, and they're so funny <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. So I um, I was debating whether to get involved with the flat hat when I first came here because my my main <clears throat> reservation was as fun as that was last year in high school. I probably wouldn't be given the same liberty or long leash to be able to just have fun with it here but then i eventually stumbled upon the opinion section um and they i guess needed writers badly enough that they published (laughs) the stuff i was writing um but yeah like it it was just very um just i just enjoyed doing it it was a lot of fun writing it and so I, i had a great time with that and people um got a lot of good feedback about how to improve the writing and just um how to keep growing in that way. And so I knew that it was something I wanted to stick with. And obviously with digital media role is very different in terms of not as much writing like that, but you still, I still had a lot of outlets, new outlets to kind of explore just the concept of having a voice and a unique kind of style and personality with things. Um, yeah, and so that's been, um, the flat has been an excellent outlet for me to continue to develop um, just my love of communicating even though I don't think I'm going to pursue journalism as a, as a career. Sorry, Adam, I'm, I'm just looking at some of the headlines of some articles you've written, and I'm really in love with a diatribe against the treatment of earbud wearers on campus. That one is so good. <laughs> That's a classic <laughs> one. Yeah, I was, I was mad. <laughs> I, I can it, tell. It, 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 well, that one was about the idea that when you're walking <laughs> on campus and you're wearing earbuds, and then like someone else you vaguely know, like, waves at you, like the awkward situation of you don't know if you're sp- going to have a full conversation with them <laughs> or if it's kind of just a walk past each other with, like, a head nod or something. And so it's you can't take relatable. the earbud out because then that signals to them that you're, like, highly invested in what's about to happen, <laughs> that it's a big deal to you. But then it also might come across as rude if you don't. And so it's just a difficult, it's a very tough situation to read. And, and then we get it, you're a B-knock. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, six people, but it is. It's so um, true, though. Like when you're at the gym and like it's like so hard to say hi to people. Like they have their earphones in, you know, like and then they say hi, but you have music on, you take it out, and then they, you, they just say hi again, and then you're like <laughs> hi, and then it's like oh my god, it's horrible. It's, it's tough, but we do what we can. It's a hard life, but <laughs> um, I guess for me, my um, I guess like my path was very similar to Molly and Jake's in a way. Like I kind of just joined freshman year of high school in my newspaper. I don't even know why. And then I was, like, good at it, and I started liking <laughs> it. So I was like, okay, I'll stick with this. And then I became the editor of that. And, like, Jake said, it, like, burnt me out because that was the first year we were completely virtual for the entire year. And I was like, well, I have to figure out what to do with this. Um, but then I joined the intern program for the Fat Hat because I was like, again, I'm kind of good at this. <laughs> um, and I was actually, like, low-key thinking about, like, not continuing with it after the intern program. I applied to be an associate editor. And then Lulu just asked me to be a news editor. I was like, well, that answers my question for me. But then as I, like, continued with it, I, like, really, really started to like it a lot more. 
And I think when you put in enough effort into something new, like it's impossible to not like feel really strongly about it and want to see it do well. And so just like my path made sense to continue as operations coordinator. And like this past year made me realize that like, oh, I think like if you had asked me like three months ago if I were gonna want to be EIC, I would have been like, no, that's like horrible for my mental health. <laughs> but then I was like, well, uh, I can. <laughs> like, um, and then I was like, well, I should. Um, I think like that I can, there are things that I want to do and I want to change and like, um, keep going strong. So, I think Vivian and I suggest you take flourishing after <laughs> after your tenure. <laughs> oh yes, very good class. Yeah. All right. So I think we'll we'll go for like a just a, a little bit longer. So final question, just a quick little one. So there's there's all these new kids on staff. There's a lot of new people. What's up with them? How do we, how do we feel about how do we feel about that? Is there any, do you have any advice for the for the new kids? Do you feel optimistic about where where the paper is going? Are we in good hands? Yeah, I mean, I like. I think first of all, Anna did just an incredible job with the intern program and in getting um, all these new writers and new videographers and photographers and <laughs> what do you have it on staff um, is such an accomplishment, like on her end with the program. But just in general, I think like our staff this year was a really green staff. There's a lot of new print editors and it turned out awesome, you know, like they have grown so much and watching like the new green editors grow has been one of the most rewarding parts of like, uh, as Vivian and Jake said before, our positions. Um, so nothing but high hopes, <laughs> you know, I think a green staff is honestly a, like a great thing. It's a blessing in a lot of ways. So. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I feel like very optimistic about the next staff because I feel like they're already like starting the ball rolling like very strong and like already have a bunch of new ideas. Like, um, shout out to Agavni who is taking my position as the new executive editor. She's already like implemented a lot of like new ideas. Like we hinted towards Adam's advice column. That was her idea. Um, and she and Tiger also, uh, who's like our videos editor, um, are also really spearheading like the social chair position that they kind of <laughs> gave themselves and doing a lot more social events, which, as we mentioned, is like very important to the well-being of our staff and um, sort of mitigating those like burnout effects that can really easily happen when you're working in journalism. Um, so just seeing that they're getting off to such a strong start and like already have so much excitement and like new ideas coming, I think like that gives me a lot of hope that for the direction that the paper will go in, because I feel like a lot of years we've all experienced kind of the same, almost like systemic issues with the paper. So it's kind of nice to see that they're trying like new strategies to kind of do things a little different and um, hope that the, in hopes of the next generation sort of having a different experience with some of those issues. With each volume only being a year, it feels like the first six months is getting comfortable with what you're doing. And then the next yeah. six months, as soon as you are comfortable is it's time to prepare the next for the next volume. Um, so I'm incredibly confident in not just Ethan, who's replacing me, but our entire staff, because they've been working towards this for six months. Um, they have all the tools that they need, and they're the right team to do it. Yeah, uh, it's a slightly different answer here. I have uh, personally a lot of reservations about the guy who's taking over my role <laughs> this year. I have serious, deep, abiding concerns. So do I. And I, um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think he knows what is going on. Yeah, I've been meaning to reach out to Anna to talk about maybe seeing if <laughs> we could look for someone a little more qualified and a little more potential. Um, but no, Ryan's going to kill it, obviously. he's. I, I, I couldn't, uh, if we had 30 more minutes, I, that wouldn't be enough time for me to list all the ideas he's thrown out to me Aww. and just new initiatives he's had and things he wants to do with all the different sections under There's so his many ideas. wing. So, um, and I think digital media has a role with a ton of potential for um, for new initiatives and ideas. And there's just a lot of room for creativity and Ryan definitely is oozing with creativity. So I think it's gonna, gonna be great. It's gonna be the best stuff ever if you look at the editor in chief. Just kidding. But, um, no, you're, she's, awesome. not kidding. Um, she's not kidding. She's not kidding. She's very I much not kidding. I want to echo what everyone else said. I remember we, I set up like an exec meeting like as soon as like pretty soon after I named everyone an exec, and we like I was like, oh, this would be like an hour long. It ended up being like quite long with everyone yeah. just like spitting out ideas. I had like some ideas. I was like, you guys can go first, and I was like, wow, I'm not getting my ideas in at yeah. all today. We, there's just so much like we have a lot of things that we're planning on doing. There's so much like energy. 
um, and excitement for like changes and and just like making everything stronger and I'm kind of inspired by that so we'll see where it goes inspiring person at the helm Absolutely. And staff. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like a pretty a pretty optimistic outlook for where we're going, which I think is a perfect positive upbeat note to kind of end our, our first episode on is a is an exciting, excited view of, of where the, the paper's going. Uh, thank you all for for listening and, and listening to us yap for about forty minutes or so. We'll be back two ish weeks from now, I'd say, with hopefully our new executive team. So I guess I'm going to drag Anna back for another one of these <laughs> if she doesn't get sick of it just yet. And then I'll be back and then we'll have a few a few new voices. We're going to talk about I guess a lot more of, you know, where where is the paper going? You know, what's what is the what is the future hold for for the flat hat? But until then, again, thank you all for for listening and we'll catch you later. Bye.